Hello and welcome to episode number eight of Tradecraft Security Weekly. This week I'm going to be talking to you about using open source intelligence to discover externally facing assets of an organization. This is a very, very, very important part of the penetration testing recon phase uh, as well. You know, attackers are doing the same thing all the time. Um, too. So it's very valuable for both pen testers and blue team members to know how to do because if you're on the blue team, you want to know what assets are out there uh, that are potentially, you know, a- able to be hit by anyone, um, you know, around the world on the internet. Uh, you know, a lot of times what we're seeing out there is, uh, you know, obviously web servers are, you know, one of the, the main things that we see externally facing. You have VPN devices, you have uh, mail servers, FTP servers, you name it. Um, you know, a lot of organizations have a lot of assets that are available out there and knowing what's out there first is going to be important in terms of discovering vulnerabilities uh, for any organization. Um, you know, it's it's typically the entry point into any organization remotely, so it becomes very important to know what's there um, so that you can properly assess uh, the, the full exposure for any organization. Um, so locating them using open source intelligence is really awesome because you don't actually have to send any sort of data to the network at all. So from a, from a stealthiness standpoint, um, using open source tools, it's possible to, to enumerate a lot about organizations. Um, you know, oftentimes we'll, when we're doing pen tests, we get a scope, right? And a lot of times that scope might include uh, some subnet ranges that the organization wants us to assess, maybe some some host names, some DNS or uh, uh, some domain names. Um, but regardless of what they give us, most of the time, what we'll do is go and actually do some recon to discover what else they own um, so that we can go back to the company and say, hey, you know, you gave us this list. Uh, this is the scope you gave us. Here's some things that you you didn't provide us, that you didn't say you wanted tested. Um, are these some things that you, A, either don't know about or maybe you didn't want tested in the first place? But a lot of times, you know, we'll go back to them and, and then they'll say, oh, wow, yeah, those are some legacy systems we totally forgot about. Um, and we, we did want included in the assessment. So, you know, just from a, a value add standpoint, being able to discover those extra hosts, um, can add a lot too. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of times regarding, depending on, on how, um, the organization has purchased their IP ranges, it might be through an ISP and it might, might actually be difficult to determine specifically if a range is owned by a company, but if you can, you know, at least align some domain names to IPs and provide that back to them, a lot of times you can figure out. Uh, at least like uh, some subnet range, uh, uh, some some possibilities there that they might want to go with um, or that they might not even know about. Uh, so in terms of doing this, um, there's a lot of different methods uh, that have been well documented. There's a lot of, of tools that I'm going to talk about here in a moment. Um, but so there's, there's some very primary methods in which we can go about discovering hosts. First of all, search engines like Google and Bing. Um, you know, you go to Google and Bing, you search for the domain name of the organization you want um, using the site parameter, and then you start taking off subdomains. So, for example, you do like site uh, domain.com and then dash site colon domain.com. Um, like, so, like, let's say you, if you didn't want to include the dub 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 uh, domain or subdomain of a domain, you could do dash site colon dub 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 dot domain.com and now your search results won't include that subdomain anymore and you can start enumerating all the subdomains by just removing the ones you already know about. Um, Another very uh, popular method is to add just straight up brute force DNS. So if you get a a domain name to resolve, then you know it probably exists, right? Um, So you just start brute forcing subdomains by doing things like let's say mail.domain.com, wiki.domain.com, sharepoint.domain.com and you're going to get potentially you know resolved IPs back from doing those those DNS lookups, um, just brute forcing the DNS alone. And again, you're not really hitting the the external assets of the organization at this point. I'm just doing DNS lookups. Uh, who is lookups uh, for just netblock range? So like you go to like uh, let's say like one of your um, your internet registry sites like the Aaron right Aaron um, uh, website, and you start searching for the name of the organization. Um, you know a lot of organizations register their their netblocks under their their company name right. Um, so you go to the you go to the site, search for the company name. Um, a lot of them actually accept wildcards too, so you can start in, inserting asterisks to look for you know potentially like if it's a company name um, with like you know incorporated on the end or whatever. Um, you can find those netblock ranges by searching just straight up the the the, the databases that that um, the the registry sites run. Another thing um, that that I find very useful is to find mail servers, right? And a lot of times you can auto-discover those. A lot of times organizations set up DNS 
uh, if you do like autodiscover.domain.com, it'll point to their mail server somewhere, which is you know either like an OS server for the most part or O365. I mean, yes, there's other uh, mail servers out there, but you know that's something that a lot of organizations use. Um, looking at port scan databases, so you know like instead of actually having to go and port scan a full range, it's already been done for you. Um, for the most part on some of the major ports that are out there. So there's a couple sites that are uh, very popular for this. So there's Shodan, um, and then there's census.io. Both those sites have literally scanned the entire internet on certain ports like web, web ports, uh, SSH ports, SMTP, um, and you can search the, those databases for net blocks. And it will tell you, hey, you know, we saw a web server here on this IP at this given time. Um, so you get, you know, the bonus is like you get the host, uh, but you also get, you know, potential ports that are open on this host too. So you didn't even have to run a port scan against them. Um, and you know, if it's a web server, a lot of times you get the cert info, info back. So you can start looking at the certificate information that might include more domain names. Um, you can start doing reverse DNS lookups on NetBlock. So once you start discovering, like if you did an errand search and you discovered that an organization owns like, let's say slash 16, you start doing reverse DNS lookups on that slash 16, you might find some more domains. Uh, that way, uh, you can check for other virtual hosts on IPs with uh, like like Bing has a, an IP service that will allow you to, to look for other virtual hosts. Um, one thing that I, I have to preface, like a lot of the, the tools that, that I'm going to talk about, um, they some of them use uh, API keys, right, to to allow you to access that information. So, um, you know, you can it, a lot of it's it's free, but then, you know, some of it you actually do have to end up paying. So I want to preface that. Um, prior to jumping into the tools. Um, but you know there are a couple other sites too. So you can search um, Threat Crowd, Hacker Target, Netcraft. They all have a lot of good information for finding hosts as well. Um, I found various uh, levels of differences between those those sites um, in terms of what they have um, in terms of what they've seen for a specific organization. So uh, open source intelligence tools. Uh, one of the main ones that uh, that I use and I think is one of the most popular is Recon NG by Tim Tomes. Um, this is a fantastic tool. It can do all the things that I just talked about, plus a lot more. Um, Spiderfoot's another one out there that does a lot of this too. Datasploit. I, I like to kind of mix and match a lot of these uh, uh, on any assessment because you get you get varying results depending on um, the the resources that the tool is hitting, right? So some of these some of these tools hit different resources um, on the internet. So like you know I was talking about Shodan. Um, you know one might hit Shodan, one might hit Census, that kind of thing. Um, the, yeah, again, keep in mind, like some of the services, like for example, Shodan, uh, you need an API key to do, um, a lot of the searches or, uh, you know, deeper searches with Shodan. Um, and you can, you know, you, you'd have to pay for that one. Uh, but some of the other services and, and all these, all these tools give great examples of how to go and, and grab those various API keys and go through the process of getting them. Some of them you can sign up for free trials for, um, and, and then, you know, if you wanted to just check it out, check the tool out, you can do free trials. Uh, but you know, just keep that in mind. You will need API keys for some of the tasks. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick host discovery demo. Actually, I mean, I, I call it a host discovery demo, but it's probably more of a, a quick, um, I guess Recon NG basic um, how-to guide. So Recon NG is a, a tool that is actually packaged with Kali Linux. So if you use Kali Linux, it's already there. Just type Recon-NG. One of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a workspace. Um, so what, what you can do is create workspace ads. So by default, you have this default workspace, which kind of encompasses all all of the uh, uh, the database, and you don't really want to use that one. You want to you want to create a workspace specifically for each organization you're going to test to kind of keep everything separate. So what we can do is workspaces add, um, and I'm going to create a test uh, workspace. So now you can see I am in this test workspace at this point. So uh, one of the first things let's let's add a domain. So let's let's target. Uh, let's let's go ahead and look up some domains for Microsoft because you know they got a lot of domains out there. Oh, sorry, it's a uh, domain. Add domains and then uh, so add domains and then let's type in Microsoft.com. All right, so now if we do show domains, you can see we have Microsoft.com out there. Um, so when you start using Recon NG, you're going to want to look at the different modules um, that are built into Recon NG. And to do that, you can just type show modules. And you can see here, there are a number of different modules um, that are available within Recon NG. Specifically, what we're going to look at today are a couple of the host modules um, so that we can, we can uh, 
uh, start start enumerating some some hosts for the Microsoft.com domain. So um, let's go ahead and do the brute force because that one will get us some some results pretty quickly. So again, this all this is doing um, is a DNS lookup. So let's see. Let's go ahead and paste in use uh, use and then the module name. Um, you can show info on the module to get to get a bit more information about what it's actually doing. So you can see it just says brute forces host names using DNS. It's going to use the uh, the domain that we just we specified through uh, the you know the add domains command. Um, and if we run it, you can see it will start going through a list of subdomains and checking uh, whether or not there's a record for them or not. And as it finds new records, it's going to add them to a database for us. And essentially, we're going to build we're going to build a list of hosts that we know about um, from that particular domain. Now, again, this is just one of the modules. Uh, there are a number of different modules that uh, you know that do like the Google searching that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's you know modules for each of those sites like Shonan, Census, Netcraft, uh, Hacker Target, um, Threat Crowd. So you know, go through each of those, at, you know, obviously you do need the API keys for some of them. Um, go through the process of, of enumerating um, these various hosts using those different modules. And then like, check us out, we already have 497 hosts. And if you type the show host command, uh, you can actually see some of the hosts that we got. So, um, you know, there you go. There's 497 hosts just by brute, brute forcing the DNS lookups for this particular organization. Now again, um, you know you can you can go through all those other modules as well, but for the sake of time, um, I'm gonna end it there. And uh, you know I want to say like to the blue team, do this for your own company. So if you have an organization and you have externally facing assets, make sure you you know about what is where. So know that you have you know you have network ranges, but additionally understand that remote attackers who have no privy to your information or your intellectual uh, uh, ability to to like have that internal knowledge of of what's going on inside your network um, that they can find this kind of stuff with open source tools without ever like really port scanning um, your external network so go do it just kind of get an idea of what's out there and what's discoverable easily by an attacker um, I'm going to include all the links to all these various tools and techniques uh, in the show notes below. Follow me on Twitter at DaftTech. Thanks and have a great day.